I'm gonna go to the place that I was at when she killed me. OH GOD! Okay, what the heck, what am I doing? So I was just making this project, and it was a bit of a hassle for me to understand how it worked, and I thought I could share to everyone else how it works so they don't have to go through the pain that I went through. Well, as much. But once you understand it, it's actually really easy, and it's actually pretty dang cool. So you're trying to make a multi-slope ADC. There are a few options. You could make a fast one, you could make a slow one that's really precise, or you could go all out and use some combination of the two to get fast and precise. And the third one is obviously the best, but it's not exactly easy to pull off. It's not hard, but it's time consuming, at least for me. And that's why I ended up going with slow but accurate. So I'd recommend choose one of those at the beginning and keep in mind that you ha you should stick with this. Okay, so, uh, Minecraft, woohoo. So, we're just gonna use a comparator as an op amp. Uh, that will be the inverting input. This will be the non-inverting input. Um, and this is just, really, this is enable. And this is a comparator, so it's not really an op amp. But, so, first we need an integrator, so... For Okay, change of plans, that went terribly. Good old false stop. I don't know how to pronounce it. If we get an op amp, and we connect the non-inverting input to ground, and we connect a capacitor across the op amp, and we connect a resistor here, a switch here, and a switch here, here and we get this is by the way this isn't quite a multi-slope ADC yet just so that you know but we need to know this before we understand the multi-slope analog to digital converter so this will be a reference voltage minus 5 volts and I hate that these are different sizes ow ow So that's our reference, the negative 5. And then this will be our unknown input voltage. So here if we start, then if we input this for a set amount of time, that's going down very slowly. So, oh god, now... So if we turn this on for a set amount of time, one, like, I mean, really this would be automated. And now, we have charge in this capacitor, it's inverted, so when you put positive charge in here, the capacitor, at least on this side, gets negatively charged. But now, if we use some sort of a zero crossing detector, and we do this, then we can tell how long it took for the unknown charge that was put into the capacitor to reach zero. And because this is a known voltage, then we can use that to calculate what this voltage is, and it's much easier than you would think. So, I'll be right back, just so that we can get a better example of this. Eh. Okay. Change of, change of plans. Now, we are going to add a positive reference voltage. And I didn't add a switch for some reason. So, now, when we have a positive and a negative voltage reference, when we turn this on, and we turn this on, say we overshoot a bit, like right there, then when we turn this one on, we can, we can, see, that's much better, and we can sort of add and subtract. The uh, just a quick note here, the reason why this is great is because... If we use some, I mean, just for example, if we use some sort of a clock with, that's an accurate clock that has a known time period, then we can alternatingly 
switch these on and off, on and off, on and off, and the amount, like using a feedback loop, which I'll show in a minute, um, we can use the amount of on and off time. So the amount of time that it's on versus the amount of time that it's off to determine um, what this voltage is. So if this one is turned on for longer than this one, then we know that this voltage will be negative. And if we subtract, so if we take the amount of time that this one was turned on for, minus the amount of time that this one was turned on for, and we take the total amount of cycles, so say, this one was turned on for 60 cycles, uh, I mean, 100 cycles, and this one was turned on for only 40 cycles. So if we do, and the total amount of clocks um, was uh, 300. So then we have five, which is our reference, times 60, because 100 minus 40 is 60, over 300, which is one. So let's look at an automated model of this. This is made by NNNI. Hello there. So in this, this is the input voltage, but this is just, it's much more simple than it looks. So first we have the integrator. This is the part that we already, that we looked at over here. And then this just gets turned into one bit plus or minus here, which goes into a flip flop. And when this is positive, it turns on the negative reference. And when this is negative, it turns on the positive reference. So that's why we see this here. So if we use, so I'll just, I want to add to this so that we can figure out the math part of this. So if we get a counter here, we add an up and down pin, we put, increase the bits to say 16, which is the max you can get on false set, I believe. Well, these are counters. So we get that, and then we get a decimal display. So here we're getting the net amount of counts, because every time, well, sort of, actually te technically the net amount of times the negative reference is turned on. So when the negative reference is turned on, I mean, okay, yeah, when the negative reference is turned on, this will trigger the up-down pin, which... <laughs> okay, so when the negative reference is turned on, uh, turned on, I mean, when the positive reference is turned on, it will trigger this up down counter. Or this up down control so when this is on then when this gets a signal this will go down instead of up so for measuring a positive voltage this is very useful I mean just conceptually so now if we added positive voltage watch what happens oh wait wait uh, uh, I think I need to add an AND gate yeah okay wait Okay, there we go. So you can see here, this counting is slowly going up. Now, I want to change this to 10k just so that we can get a better to understand math thingy. So now we gotta go get our equation that I forget. So I gotta go on Earth of Electronics. Okay, here we are. So this looks very intimidating, but trust me, it's not. So this part, Rn over R1, that's just the input resistance for the unknown voltage over the 
input resistance for the known voltage, and in our case, that's one because we have the same here. So we could just eliminate that. And this is the number of negative cycles minus the neg number of positive cycles over the number of total cycles. I did not count the number of total cycles because I'm an idiot. So I gotta do that. So we can let this run for some time. It really, it actually doesn't matter how long you let it run for. So see we have 68 and 338. And we also have to multiply it by our reference voltage. So let's get out a calculator. No, where's the science calculator? Here it is. So, we get 5 times 68 over 338. Oh, that's 228. Then we get one volt, almost. So that's really... That's basic. That, that, that is the basics of a multi-slope analog digital converter. If you want to look further, you can look in here and you can see how they account for bias. Um, I just want to say one thing because this sort of confused me for a while. VF minus VI is the final measured voltage if you have something called a residue ADC, which measures the voltage left in the uh, integrator when you're done measuring minus the initial voltage, which is just the voltage that was the, the amount of charge that was there when you started. So it just sort of tells you um, how much voltage your calculations say there is that really is just a part of your op amps. So if your op amps naturally put out one nanovolt and you can measure that then you can subtract that out.